Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. And today's first story is, give her anything she wants, for free? Uh, okay. Hello, this is my first time posting in this part of Reddit. I only recently discovered it and have a rather long story for my days working in a convenience store that fits this place perfectly. I used to work for a convenience store about 21 to 22 years ago. Let's just call it 812. <laughs> At the time that I joined them, they were still a division of the Southland Corporation. I ended up working for them for exactly one year, seven months and eleven days on the button. A very strange coincidence. Anyways, on to the malicious compliance. So I come in one day, around three to four in the afternoon, and the manager's not there. She's already went home, but left a note. The very first thing she wanted is for me to get straight on the register without delay, as the coworker that was leaving was getting very close to overtime, which is not allowed. No problem, right? Well, there is a small problem. We only had one running register at the time, with a single till, and the store was packed with customers. I couldn't just hop on the register. The coworker that was leaving had to counter drawer down, and I then had to recount up the drawer to make sure that it had the correct amount of cash in it. The drawer was supposed to have a specific amount of money in it. The coworker had to count it down to that specific amount, then log what she had remaining, to see if there was a discrepancy from her total sales for a shift. Meanwhile, I had to count it up to the specified amount to make sure that she did not make a mistake counting it. All of this had to be done before I could take over the drawer. Following the manager's orders, we start the process as soon as I show up and inform the customers in the store that there would be a brief holding time while we counted down the drawer and switched the shift. You could hear the moans from the people. Clearly, no one wanted to wait, but what could they do besides get into line and wait, right? So, there's this one lady. She was complaining under her breath at first. She was about the 8th or 9th customer back in the line, of about 25 to 30 people. The store was freaking packed, no joke. I was ignoring pretty much everyone at first, just trying to get through the counting process as fast as I possibly could so that I could start ringing up people. As my coworker was completing her counting and handing the drawer to me, the lady got louder and louder in her complaining, to the point that she was using a normal speaking voice, like she was talking to the other people in the crowd, no longer just complaining under her breath. I was counting as fast as possible at this point, but she switched from just stating her complaints randomly to intentionally egging on the other customers. She was trying to get them to agree with her and to start a riot in the store, saying things like, we shouldn't have to wait this long for service, should we? And we should get our stuff for free for waiting, right? To the other customers in line. I noticed that some people are starting to nod their heads at her provocations. At this point, I stopped counting and said out loud, I apologize for the brief wait, but please understand that we're required to count down our drawers to prevent losses and theft from occurring. I'm trying to count as fast as possible. I'll just be one more minute and then I can start serving people. Thank you for your patience." And went right back to counting. Well, while that quelled most of the people in line who were starting to fidget and shuffle nervously, that just made things worse with the lady. She flippin' blew up and started yelling. She shouldn't have to wait for service. She should get her slushie and sandwich for free. And then she started throwing cuss words around. Mother F for this, F that left and right. I stopped counting again and looked right up at her and told her, please ma'am, stop using profanity in our store. There are a lot of children present. Since there were mostly families in the store, there were about seven or eight kids. Again, that just made things even worse. Nothing but a non-stop stream of profanity started spewing from her mouth, at this point screaming at the top of her lungs. I finished counting my drawers, I told her, if she doesn't stop, that she'll not be served and that she be asked to leave the store. I'm trying to protect the kids in the store at this point and the line has already shrunk to about 15 people because of people walking out and leaving because of this lady. Well, she took that personally, apparently. She started with the, you're gonna serve me and I will not leave until I'm ready speech. So I glared at her and said, oh, really? I then promptly told her to leave as I started ringing up people. I told her that I was not serving her and for her to put down her merchandise and get out. Then came the, you can't make me line as she literally walked up past the other people in front of her, moving them out of her way and she stepped right up to the counter. I repeated myself, told her to put down the slushie and sandwich and told her that I was not serving her and that if she didn't leave that I would call the police. Long story short, I did have to call the police, but she left just before they arrived. Now, you're probably wondering, so where's the malicious compliance? That came the next day. You see, just 15 minutes after the lady left the store, the district manager calls me on the phone and yells at me. Did you just call the police on a paying customer? He doesn't let me get in a single word before he starts ranting about customer service this and that and informs me that the lady will be returning to the store the next day and that I will be apologizing to her in person and that I will be giving her whatever she wants for free. The next day I come in and the manager is there waiting to call me into the office where I receive a write-up for talking back to a customer and kicking them out without a valid reason. 
The manager doesn't let me get in not one single word to explain what happened. She then informs me that when the lady arrives, I will apologize, and then anything the lady places on the counter she gets for free. I was honestly stupefied by this. I planned on waiting for the lady to show up and telling her to F off and then quitting and walking out of the store, leaving no one there. That was my plan. It didn't go that way though. Hours later, after the manager had went home, I was running the register when the lady walks in, with her father and husband and cousin and sister and several kids in tow. They all grab our shopping baskets and start filling them up, as she comes up to me and says, I was told by your boss that I can get whatever I want for free. When I see this, I'm like, no way. She doesn't think she's getting everything for her whole clan for free, does she? I tell her to hold on just a moment, and I call the manager at home. She is peeved that I bothered her, and doesn't let me get out any more than the lady is here. She, the manager yells at me, telling me that she's already instructed me, and I try again. Right, but she's here with… The manager yells at me. Do you want to be fired? Just apologize to her and give her whatever she wants. I smile. You want me to give her whatever she wants for free? Are you certain? The manager yells back. Are you stupid? Do you not hear me? Yes, ma'am, as you wish. When the lady finally makes it to the counter, I do a very polite bow to her and apologize, making it sound as sincere as possible. I wanted to punch the smug SH eating grin right off of her face, but I kept it to myself and started ringing up the items in the basket that she was setting on the counter. I explained to her that I had to ring them up first and then cash out the order so that there was a receipt, $780 worth of stuff. I was laughing so hard on the inside. The next day when I showed up, the store manager, the regional manager, the district manager, and one of our company's loss prevention officers were all waiting for me, as I was led directly into the office. I explained that the district manager had told me to give the lady whatever she wanted for free, and that when the lady came in with her entire family, I called the store manager at home, because I was pretty sure that he didn't mean for her whole family to get free stuff. The store manager yells at me, you didn't tell me that her whole family was here trying to get free stuff. And I calmly respond, I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen to me. You called me names and asked if I wanted to be fired, so I did as you told me. They began reviewing the video, which has great audio detection. It was kind of hard to hear the manager. When I explained what she was saying, they could make it out. They asked me to leave the room. I could hear the volume of them talking going up and down from yelling to regular talking for another hour before I was asked to come back into the office. The regional manager told me that they had just reviewed the tapes from the afternoon that the incident with the lady took place and he apologized to me and said that the lady had called the office and made up a whole pack of lies about what had happened and that the DM had not reviewed the tapes before calling me. I was told that if the DM had done his job properly, none of this mess would have happened. I was then told that the lady was permanently banned from our store if she returned to call the police and have her trespassed. That's the end of it. I never did see the lady again and just two weeks later we had a new DM and a new store manager. I still love thinking about that to this day. I am so glad that I did not just tell her to F off and walk out. The second story is, don't ask an owner operator for his boss's phone number. So I drive an 18 wheeler, not only that but I own my truck and my business. One day while coming into Laredo, Texas, I was in the turning lane for my exit and this car whips out in front of me. Not really having enough room to stop, I turned onto the shoulder, threw on the air horn, which is extremely loud when you're next to the truck, and stopped right beside the guy. He proceeds to get out of his car with his phone and starts taking pictures of my truck and plate. By this time the light had turned green, so I gave him a few short horn honks to basically tell him to get going. He then beats on my door, so I roll my window down and he starts screaming about his ears hurting and how I'm damaging his ability to hear. He then demands that I give him my boss's number and my driver's license number so he can call it in and report me and have my job for this and he proceeded to move his car to the shoulder and back so close to my bumper I couldn't get around him. I kind of smirked at him and told him he didn't want to speak to my boss because he's a short-tempered man that he wouldn't like what my boss would have to say about this issue, but he insisted that he speak to my boss. I also told him if he wanted to call me in, all he needs was the numbers on the side of my truck since it's assigned to me. Considering I only own one truck, you can imagine what I would assign my truck number to be. I gave him my cell phone number and watched as he laughed while speaking each number as he dialed. I see his number pop up on my phone mounted to the windshield, he couldn't see it from his angle and tried to hold in my laughter. I let it ring for a minute and he's getting impatient, the whole time traffic is going around us. I finally picked up the phone and answered it. Insert company name here transport, how can I help you? His face turns beet red, he proceeds to yell at me some more and tells me it isn't over because now he has my number. Yeah dude, so do about 100,000 other people, so what? A week later I get a phone call from a number I didn't have saved in my phone. I had forgotten about the incident but thought it might be a broker or a customer. I answer the phone and this lady chirps up. Turns out it was his mother and she wanted monetary compensation for her son's troubles. 
I asked if she knew what had even happened, and she tells me some story about how his bumper was damaged by my truck, and that he was scared to talk to me because me driving an 18-wheeler was intimidating to him. Being a smart owner, I have a camera in my truck, and I dump all my truck's footage onto my hard drive, so I asked her if she could receive videos over email. She said sure, but wasn't sure what I was about to send her. I spend a minute or two looking through the hard drive on my laptop and find the video of the incident and send it to her. While still on the phone, I can hear the audio playing as she watched. Her tone changed in an instant, and I heard her put the phone down, and all heck broke loose in that house. There was Spanish screaming, things being thrown, and lord knows what else going on. It reminded me of that movie A Christmas Story, when Ralphie's mom calls that lady about the curse word and hears the apocalypse on the phone. Yeah, it was kinda like that, but in Spanish. She then comes back to me and very kindly asks for two things. One, she asks that I forget she called, and act as if this never happened because she was embarrassed to no end. And two, if I could delete the video of her son's idiocy. I told her that number one was fine, I could do that, but as far as number two, I would not delete the footage. But the only way anyone other than her or me would see it is if it was needed for a court case. She bid me a good day and hung up the phone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked it, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button.